Today, on the 30th of March, the Church commemorates St. Joan of Arc, the patroness of France, who inspired the French in battle against the English in the 15th century and was subsequently executed as a heretic. Joan was born in 1412 into the midst of the Hundred Years' War, a conflict that actually lasted 116 years from 1337 to 1453. This war was not one constant ongoing battle, but rather an intermittent series of fights punctuated by years of peace and bouts of plague over who had the right to rule France. The dispute involved a long series of claimants, both English and French, to France's throne. This being the medieval period, there was much intermarriage between royal families, making a clear-cut winner a tough pick. Some French, called the Burgundians, supported the English claim. Joan was born to a devout peasant family in France. She was illiterate and spent her childhood learning domestic duties and helping on the farm. It is said that even within her local area, people disagreed about who should rule France. When Joan was around 12 or 13 years old, she began to have visions. She said her messengers were St. Michael the Archangel, St. Catherine of Alexandria, and St. Margaret of Antioch, and their assignment became clear. She was to help Charles VII be officially proclaimed the rightful King of France. As a little girl, she did not immediately act on these messages, but she continued to see visions and hear voices, and by the time she was 16, she approached a local garrison commander and told him that she wanted to meet the king. Naturally, he scoffed, but Joan must have been incredibly charismatic, and this being medieval France, a claim of visions appealed to the popular imagination. The locals began to support her, and Joan eventually parlayed this ability to rally opinion into martial victory. But first, she needed to sway the commander, who relented and sent her with an escort on the 300-mile journey, some of it through wilderness, to the king's court. What happened there was a mystery. Tradition says Joan was able to recognize Charles VII, even though he disguised himself to test her. Supposedly, she told him things only he would know. Convinced, he allowed her dressed for battle as a man, to lead his troops into the crucial fight for Orleans. Fervent hope spread that the young visionary was God's instrument of French victory. Although Joan was wounded during the battle, the liberation of Orleans and subsequent victories led to the formal crowning of Charles at Reims, which had also been foretold in her visions. A renown spread, she was perhaps the most famous person in Europe. Unfortunately for Joan, military victory was short-lived. About a year after the victory at Orleans launched her epic successes, she was captured by the Burgundians. Her subsequent imprisonment cast a negative light on Charles VII, who did almost nothing to secure her release. The English put her on trial, and she was also put to trial by the church. Transcripts of her trial exist, and they portray a courageous woman who maintained confidence in her visions. Joan was charged with heresy, witchcraft, and dressing like a man. Eventually found guilty, she was condemned to death by burning on a stake before a crowd of thousands on May 30th, 1431. She was only 19 years old. The Hundred Years' War would drag on, but Joan's martyrdom helped spur the French to eventually drive the English out of most of France. Charles VII, perhaps feeling some well-deserved guilt, procured a trial review years later, 30 years after her death, that nullified Joan's guilty verdict. Hundreds of years later, St. Joan of Arc inspires more questions than nearly any saint in history. Books about her fill shelves, and perhaps more films tell her story than that of any other saint. She continues to fascinate and captivate the popular imagination. In 1920, 
She was canonized by Pope Benedict XV. She is the patroness of France, captives, soldiers, and those ridiculed for their piety. Placing all our petitions before her today, let us pray. Most extraordinary soldier, you insistently proclaimed, let God be served first. You began by winning many victories and received the plaudits of princes, but then you were given to the enemy and cruelty put to death. Instill in us the desire to serve God first and perform our earthly tasks with that idea ever in our minds. Amen.